here it goes. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited um, if you're new. Today we're starting a brand new series called Spritz and Chips and Hunter thought of the name. So this series is basically, I wanted to integrate a little bit more of like chatty style content, something just really fun and like lighthearted. We could do different topic, talk about different topics. Um, it really is just like open forum. Um, and I think that we want to start posting spritz and chips um, weekly. weekly and on Fridays. So, you know, it's the end of the week, you're stressed out. I know end of the week is like wind down time for us and we love to like have a drink after work. If you're watching this, grab a glass of wine or a sparkling water, whatever you want, and just sit down. We're gonna chat, have fun, <laughs> and hang out. She said we're gonna film it every Thursday, and then we're gonna post it on Friday. The, the whole agenda. concept behind Spritz and Chips, I think yes. Julie already told you, but I want where you the name came it. from is, um, we're trying to think of something that we can do for like a chit chat session, but the whole idea is that it's always gonna be some kind of drink or cocktail, um, and some kind of little snack, like a bite-sized snack. That we'll yeah, have. well, you forgot. So we went to Italy, um, we traveled to Europe, uh, two years ago and we the drink in Italy is Aperol spritz and they're so good you have them every day so at the end of each day we would like sit down for happy hour and we would drink an Aperol spritz and they always give you like potato chips hence the chips so I was like Hunter I really want to do like a new series I want it to be kind of chatty and just like fun like it's like cocktail hour like you're talking to your friends <laughs> And I'm like, help me come up with a name that I wanted to be kind of catchy and cute. And he came up with Spritz and Chips because we like love Aperol Spritz. So that's the background. We're gonna teach you guys today how to make an Aperol Spritz if you've never had one. Um, but we're also gonna like always change it up. So we'll have like different drinks. We'll have wine. We're a big like wine family. And um, yeah, so we'll just do whatever we please. But Spritz will be like most of the time. And we'll always change up the snack. It's not always gonna be chips. It'll be yeah. uh, like one day, what? Cheese and salami. Yeah, cheese and salami. Uh, maybe it'll be, um, what? <laughs> we're gonna kick it off by making our drinks. So um, we're gonna grab all of our materials. Okay, first thing first is wine glasses. So they always put spritz in an actual wine glass in Italy or in Europe, like wherever you are. Um, and like always with a stem. I don't know why, they never do it in flat cups. I mean, you could do it however you wanted to, but um, we're gonna do it in wine glass. So these wine glasses, I put in my home decor haul if you haven't seen. They're from Crate and Barrel. I'll link them below. Um, but yeah, if you, if you haven't seen my home decor haul, um, you guys can check that out. It's in the box down below. Um, but if you're new and you're not sure what's going on here um, we actually just moved into a new house so we're in the kitchen we're filming for the first time in the kitchen not that that's a normal place to film but um yeah we moved from san francisco to texas and um oh club soda <laughs> it's okay um oh in the prosecco where's the prosecco in the fridge we moved from San Francisco to Texas. So um, if you wanted to learn more about like why we moved and everything, I have lots of videos on my channel about the move, moving vlogs, house tour, all that good stuff. So if you're stumbling across this video, um, you can check that out. But um, yeah, so we're settling into the new house. We've been here for a couple of weeks and no perfect time, more perfect time than to kick off the new series in the new house. Three things that you need for an Aperol spritz. Oh my God, I'm pointing that at my face. Uh, first is Prosecco. And I think you could use champagne too, but Prosecco yeah, is, is like the common. Is the one. Uh, Aperol, which is like a liqueur of some sort. Um, it's an Italian liquor. Um, oh my God, whoo, it scared me. So you do three parts Prosecco and it tells you right on the back. It'll give you like a little recipe. Kind of like Nestle Toll House, they put the chocolate chip recipe <laughs> on the back of the back. Um, so, Prosecco. Now we're gonna do two parts of Aperol, and you need a lot of ice. One, two, three, four. And, oh, hello. hello, Mr. Hoover. Somebody wants to join. We actually, we should move the location of Spritz and Chips so that he can be a part of it. This is our third family member. This is Noah. And then top it off with a little club soda. 
and our straws. Some straws. Yeah. I know these are milkshake straws. Is all I can find at the store. And voila! And normally you need an orange slice to finish it off. Right, Mr. Hoover? Cheers! Yeah. Cheers. Spritz and chips. Cheers. Are these plastic? No. We need more Prosecco. We went to Shake Shack for dinner. What did you get at Shake Shack? I just get like a normal burger, but this. I usually get a normal burger. I usually get the normal Shake Shack burger just with one patty. Mm -hmm. Um, I was tired of being a basic that you can't get something new. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I got the Smoke Shack. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was bacon and. Cherry peppers? Cherry peppers. I have not heard of those. They're like the little red ones. They're good. Um, and then it was like the Shake Shack sauce. Yeah. Just plain. And some cheese. But it was really good. good. It was really good. It was like spicy and crispy and yum. Yeah. So anyways, because we went there, we got on the topic of like junkish food or like food that's like kind of indulgent or like yeah. not very good for you because we try to eat pretty healthy. So if you um, watch my other videos and vlogs and stuff. You see, we put a strong effort in being healthy around here, but we splurge, you know, on we splurge yeah, for yeah. sure. So we uh, were talking yeah. about like guilty pleasures of like bad food that just. It wasn't even like bad food that you splurge on. It was like what yeah. was like your guilty pleasures like, as a kid? What mm -hmm. was something you did? It was like a trick of yours or something you just did? That yeah, or like bad for you. Bad like for it's not you. good quality like food. It's like yeah, and it's not even a guilty pleasure. It's just like what are you? Almost yeah. like what are you embarrassed of that you did as a kid, but still is so delicious and you do it again. Right. So yeah. yours came up because we were talking about hot dogs. How did we? Talk we were talking about, about hot dogs. I think I saw a video today of someone making like a chili cheese dog. And I'm like, wow, I haven't had a hot dog oh, in a yeah. long time. Yeah. And I'm not a big hot dog fan either. Jenny I love hot, hot dogs. dogs. I don't really like them that much. And I was like, one, what, where do you get a good hot dog? Right, Costco. Two, what's in a freaking hot dog? Right, <laughs> I don't know. I don't wanna know. And three, what's in a freaking hot dog? <laughs> so we started talking about hot dogs. We started talking about Vienna sausages somehow. Cause as a kid, I remember growing up eating saltine crackers that were stale as hell. <laughs> With like craft, which is still like sliced cheese, touch. which I is fine, but in that situation, it's not. Fine. It's not fine in that situation. I remember it was kind of like a little bit darker yellow because it had been old, so like half of the cheese square was like a little darker orangish color, and then it like slowly faded to like a lighter, softer yellow, which means like half the cheese was good, half of it was bad, um, and then I would top it off with a little bit of Vienna sausage. But that was not my guilty pleasure. That's something I just like. It, it makes me sick even thinking that I used to eat that. But the thing I did as a kid, I remember we started talking about Eggos. Eggo and I used waffles. to eat like, I remember my mom would buy, I don't know, how, how many come in a pack? 24? Maybe. But I would finish them in like four days. I would throw them back. I would, I would eat four at, in like one sitting. I'd eat four, butter them up, maybe throw some cinnamon on top. Mm. I would, I would <laughs> throw the, the plastic. What's that? Log cabin. What's like the old, Auntie old lady, Auntie Annie's yeah, syrup? syrup. Mm -hmm. And it would, when you heat up in the microwave, it would turn hot at the bottom or like show a little hot sign. So good. Do you remember that? No. It had like a little microwave on the bottle. And when it was ready, it would say hot. It would like fade and say hot. I don't know. Oh. I kind of remember that. But anyways. That's like probably so bad for you. Yeah. That's to what, microwave that's what I'm thinking. You microwave your syrup. First of oh all, microwaves God. isn't the best for you. But then you're microwaving plastic that the syrup is in, <laughs> which is just straight. And it's yeah, not it just, kind of and it's probably not like good syrup either. It's probably no. like chemically syrup. High fructose like, syrup. Yeah, yeah, not good for you. But anyways, four waffles at least, like a little toasted, a little burnt. Um, buttered them up with probably some fake ass butter. Um, <laughs> can't believe it's not butter. Can't believe it's not real butter or something like that. Throw a little bit of cinnamon on top with some hot syrup. So that was like already one problem in itself. But that's um, delicious. But I would pair that with like a bowl of cold cocoa pebbles. Oh so I'll take one bite of my waffles and then wash it down with some cocoa pebbles. Cocoa pebbles and I love a hot dog. That's how we got in that conversation. But um, yeah, I don't know what hot dogs are, but they're so good. I like love salty things. I'm like a salt tooth. <laughs> By the way, I've, um, for those of you who um, know about like the dog names, if you're from around here, then you would know that. 
Um, I've come up with a new name for Noah, and it's Mr. Hoover. I don't know where it came from, but Mr. Hoover, and um, sometimes leave it to Beaver or Beaver. It's yeah. like he totally fits that role. Well, you speaking know? of names, we have a couple new friends on the porch. Oh, yes, yeah. we have new friends on the porch. So, yeah, there's two frogs, that, they're always on the porch. One's like smaller and one's really big, but they're so yeah. cute. The one that's really big is really big. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy. The big one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but we're animal lovers around here, so I was really excited that we had some resident frogs around. But anyways, back, back to, the, to food. the food conversation. Um, so when I was little, I think that my guilty foods were goldfish. Mm. Do you remember when the goldfish were in the big cartons, mm -hmm. like at Costco? The they don't, yeah. yeah. Do they make that anymore, that Probably. style? I think so. They're so good and you would like reach your hand in when you're little because you'd fit in and you mm -hmm. just eat a bunch of goldfish. So that's what I would love. And then my mom would also buy Famous Amos. Mm. Oh my gosh. And if my sisters are watching this, they probably are. They probably can remember so many other foods that we all ate as a kid. You yeah, they'll remember. Famous Amos and goldfish? Yeah, Famous Amos and goldfish. And I can't really remember what else. That actually um, reminds me. Sorry to know. Churros. Taco Bell churros. Mm. Oh my god. Oh, so you're like going down the list of things. Kind of. Sorry. <laughs> well, that actually but yours reminds really good. me. My, that reminds me that when I was a kid, I don't know why I would do this. It made me feel like I was like going camping or something. But I'd get a plastic Ziploc bag, and I'd go through the pantry and collect all the items that I liked into one bag and have like a make like my a own, hodgepodge. Like a Chex mix, but like my own created oh, from the stuff from the pantry. That's a good idea. So I would do like, you know, I'd do goldfish. I would do like M and M's. I would do. Um, like a granola bar, but I would like break it up into pieces where they're like bite size. Oh, yeah. creative. And then maybe sometimes Famous Amos, that like what gave me the idea. Or what Yum, gave me the idea. yeah. Um, That's a good idea. I'd put like craisins in there. i put a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, just like make it all the stuff you like. Yeah, that and, makes then, sense. and then you just go in for a bite and it's like delicious. Everything you love. Love that. Yeah. Mm, maybe we'll make that next Fritz and Chips. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so if you have a throwback food that you, or it doesn't have to be a throwback, it could just be like you're just something naughty that is probably not good for you, comment below. I'm curious what it is um, because we were reminiscing on that earlier. And yes, Shake Shack was quite the indulgence, but it was mm, delicious. So good. So good. Um, when we went to Stagecoach, actually. Mm. I, they kept losing me. People kept losing me. And every time I shook up again, I would always have a Shake Shack burger in my hand. And I think in three days I killed like eight or nine. Something like that. Ten maybe. They're not, well. They're not huge. They're not huge. Yeah, you could put down like two of them for sure, easily. Mm -hmm. I would have like a beer or two. And then yeah. I'd be like, hey, I'm hungry. Yeah. And go stand in. It was like a long line too. I'd wait, I'd wait 45 minutes to an hour just for one burger and I did like. Dedication. Well, I spent 10 hours in line at the Shake Shack line. <laughs> I got 10, about an hour per line. So good. Man. These chips are not good. <laughs> They're not very good. So, one of my favorite chips, especially to have with uh, Aperol Spritz, is rosemary chips. Mm -hmm. It's also like a big thing in Italy. They have a bunch of rosemary potato chips, or rosemary flavored potato chips. And so I've searched far and wide for some rosemary chips. And. No left. It was left empty handed. So we were at Home Goods earlier and we were getting like some stuff for our house and we were at the checkout line. We were like, shoot, we need chips for spritz and chips. And we saw these like truffle chips. So we're like, oh, sure, like we'll just get them. And like they can't be like that bad, but they're as suspected not very good. So they're more for aesthetic um, at this point because yeah. they're not very tasty. So I've said that, but I keep eating them. I know. <laughs> It doesn't smell good either. I'm kind of like, I think it's because I feel awkward on camera, so I'm just eating some chips. Hunter's warming up on camera. You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm warming up. Don't mm -hmm. judge me. We were talking earlier about um, the thunderstorms in the south, so then that's just something that's like really different from living in the south and living on the west coast because we were in San Francisco for two years. And I oh. forgot about the thunderstorms and like the lightning that is like really common in the south because of the weather patterns there's just always storms and it's the like prettiest thing ever to like have lightning and like the sounds of like thunder really often and we had like a really like kind of rainy stormy day today it just made me remember that like we don't get that on the west coast at all and it's something yeah that I, I, really I remember like, like talking to people maybe in my office or 
people I'd meet in San Francisco and, and talk about thunderstorms and lightning and they would be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I, it kind of, is that something that's common that people don't know about? I don't think so. I think if you're from the South, then you get lots of thunder. I mean, growing up, like we would do like, like we were talking about this the other day, like the different, like no matter where you grew up, you do like different drills based on like where you're from. So like raised in San Francisco, we're on the San Andreas Fault, which is like an earthquake line. So we would do earthquake drills, but like he would do like tornado drills at school yeah. and like, and um, like hurricane and stuff or not really hurricane, that would be like Florida, huh? Yeah. We do like tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was really it. This is one thing that we really like about Texas. How many of you are from the South? Like, I don't even know where everybody lives. I know there's a lot of Texas viewers because I can, we look at my analytics and I can see where you guys are from, but generally just like state. So comment where you're from down below. Um, if you're from Texas, definitely comment. But um, if you're from the South and you know the thunderstorms, then you know how pretty they are and like kind of soothing. And what are the other things we like <coughs> about dark. Texas? We like the prairie, the prairie land, land yeah. with the wildflowers. Yeah. That's kind of what inspired your tattoo. Yes. And it's kind of funny, like I used to call you wildflower. Was that because you liked wildflowers? I think so. I think it's because I liked them. Mm. Yeah, but Texas is the prettiest wildflowers ever in spring. And that's what inspired my tattoo. I have like a wildflower tattoo. Um, you can see more like close up pictures of it on my Instagram. But um, yeah, it they have like just the prairie land. Like you don't like, appreciate it really until you come here and it's just like miles and miles of like cornfields and like open land and grass and it's like yeah. really soothing and relaxing so just to look at like nothing and we kind of live a little bit out in the country like the way that the area we live is kind of like developing as it comes north and we're at like the north end of the development so north of us is like pretty much nothing um yeah and it's kind of nice though like it's quiet it's quiet like, but we're actually we're pretty fortunate stuff. enough that through our works and stuff we come back to san francisco quite a bit so um, you know, you get the peacefulness of the country, but you still need to go back and get like the beauty of like the Bay Area and yeah. see like the rolling hills and like the Golden Gate Bridge and like live the city life for a few days at a time. And so, yeah, it's really like a nice kind of happy medium. I think we miss like the aesthetics of San Francisco mm -hmm. um, and the people there too. Like, friends. The friends in San Francisco uh, are hard to come by, but the friends in San Francisco are like solid. Yeah, so totally. When you meet uh, a friend that you bond with and connect to and like you put time in with, it's like a great group of people. For sure. Yep. And then um, here in Texas in the South, it's just like most people are friendly. Yeah. So it's harder it's to find to... like the truer friendships yeah. and pick them up from like the... It's easier to make a ton of friends. Yeah. But you have to work harder at the deeper ones, I guess. Yeah. It's like San Francisco, it's more like quality versus quantity. And here yes. it's more like quantity yes. versus quality. But within that quantity, you find the a few group of friends that you're like, these are my like right true guys. homies. Yeah. yeah. My writer guys. Totally. True but friends. I do like that. I love, I love people here. They're like so nice. And everyone is just, I'm like more of an introvert. So I, it's hard for me to like, talk to people or like meet people out and about I get really nervous to like say hi and like start conversation which is actually pretty funny because I know I'm not that way no Hunter is like the most extroverted person you will ever meet but you put me on camera and you're shy you're shy mm -hmm. but, and the opposite but it takes like a really long time and a lot of youtubers talk about this like it is hard to be yourself behind a camera like it really is I don't know what it is about it but like it feels really weird. You're making me nervous. Just <laughs> through, right? it takes just some time. It used to take me two years just to act like normal, like a normal human on camera. And now it doesn't. I don't feel awkward when it comes out, but like it does feel really strange. So I get that. Yeah. Um. I'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. Though, I think yeah. sometimes I feel more loose than others. Yeah. It yeah. just it's like practice makes yeah. perfect. Like the more you're there, you're like oh, it's just a camera. Yeah. Fine. Possibly. Yeah. We need to book our Europe trip. Let's we do. talk about travel. Yeah, so travel. We do like to travel. We don't. We don't really feel like we get to travel enough. When we are, we do get to travel for sure. We're not complaining by any means. But as like most people like to travel, we do too. And we hey, you have a hole in your shirt. I know. It's like a little mouth. I know. Guys, I put this on today, and I had a little thread hanging, so I was like, oh, I'll just cut it, and then it just got bigger and bigger, so the shirt is done, but you know what, I was too lazy. Not new ones, sorry. Oh, travel. So, 
We love to travel. Um, we don't travel enough. As we, much as we like. As much as we like. Um, and it's also hard, like when you start working, like for the people that don't work yet or like aren't out of college or high yeah. school, when you work, your work time off is like incredibly precious. Yeah. And so sometimes it's like, hey, do you want to go do this during the week and like skip work for like one day to go do this? And you're like, that sounds fun, but I would rather save that day off or two days off for yeah. like an international trip or something like that where you have to be picky go with like where you go. Home. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, exactly. And so. Um, we have a lot of things on our bucket list that we want to do and, and, and go through and kind of hit like next stops We kind of have them laid out and we can go through that later, but um, just around like work it kind of Limits you on where you can go, but at the same time working Provide you the, the, the ability, the ability to do that. and income to do those things. So yeah, it's like a bittersweet thing And so all totally. of you who don't work yeah. You should look forward to it. Um, it's great, but it you do work. I'm sure you understand and um, mm -hmm. Curious to see like any tips on how you make travel happen with your job mm -hmm. totally. We have like we're flex our jobs are pretty flexible. We yeah. can travel which we're lucky for that too as well So yeah. we're planning a trip in September um, to Europe because my sister our older sister just moved to Amsterdam um, the one that got married and recently in Palm Springs, I did a vlog on it. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you would have known that. Um, but she yeah, moved to Europe. So we're going to go visit and we're going to fly into Amsterdam. And I think we're going to do Oktoberfest in Germany, yeah, so which will be really fun. And then <coughs> go to France and Paris, um, which I've never been, neither is Hunter. And we really want to go just because we haven't seen it. So we need to just like cover like the basics. Like we've been to Italy. We need to go to France. We need to go to Spain. Like a little hidden secret about classes. Julia is that she can speak French. No, I can't. And so she wants to give a little demonstration. To no, you. I, mean, I can't speak French. You can know a couple words. Mm -mm. Can you just at least say like the word you know? What's it called? No. <laughs> how, do you say, how do you say Paris? Perry. Huh? I don't speak French. I took French in high school and I literally don't remember one word of French, which is really sad. I don't have like the language. Does everyone know all of, do y'all know his nicknames? Um, you know what? We did go over them in my get ready with me and my girlfriends, but uh, I kind of like was drawing a blank. So I was like really excited. I like, forgot all of his name, his name. So like, I think we should talk about them again. One I call him a lot actually is bootlicker. <laughs> One day Noah was licking my boots and <laughs> bootlicker. Turned into bootlicker. Bootlicker came up and I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah, wait, just so just to give some context, we're talking about like I don't know if anyone else talks to their their animals in different voices, but like I just like created an entire language and like life for my dog. Can you give a can you show us some like a little snippet of the language? This is Mr. Hoover. Today was a really tough day for him. He did uh, take a lot of naps. And <laughs> what else did he do? Oh, and he chased some flies. He loved to chase flies. He, he came over when I was sanding the um, cabinets today. Oh, oh, he was your, your assistant. He was my assistant, yes. And yes. Um, a little bit of um, sawdust or sand got yeah. his nose and he had a sneeze. <laughs> Wait, did he really? Yeah. <laughs> He sneezed because so he was cute. like he was like checking out what I was doing. <laughs> Sniffing it. Yeah, like inhaled a big thing of uh sawdust. Well, anyway, so, so we crazy. just said uh, I like love to I don't know why, but I just create like this whole <laughs> life for him and like I make up all these different names and it's just kind of like this weird, like quirky yeah. outlet for and me. It's kind of weird. I, but I never knew that was a thing until, until I met you, you mm -hmm. and your family. Your mm -hmm. whole family does it. Mm -hmm. Especially the women in your family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but now, good. after seeing that, I also see like a lot of other people do it too. Right. No. So like, I brought this up in my get ready with me and my friends, and a lot of you in the comments were like, "Oh my god, of course!" And you guys had like seven names for your dogs too. So I like, know private, I'm not alone. You had a ton of private messages with like hilarious. Names. Oh my god, they were so funny. I like enjoyed it so much. I'm like, okay, I'm not <laughs> crazy, and I know like all my friends, like my girlfriends, like they do it too. They have names. So, anyways. Out of that, every day is a new story and a new thing, so we always come up with different names. So one, is, most recently, is um, Beaver and Mr. Hoover. So Mr. Hoover is like my latest name. And I say, you know, I refer to him as Mr. Hoover. Um, at one time, moment in time, he was Baba Ganoush, 
He, he was Mr. McGaffigan. Um, he was Mr. Goo, Mr. Goose, Mid um, Mitter. Oh, that was like how yeah, it started. That was like was Mitter. Wow. It went from Mister to Mitter. To Mitter, yeah. Wow, yeah. And the, the voice evolves. You know, it just it just grows and it develops into its own beast. Um, so it, it might sound a little different every time you, you hear me talk. Yeah. Okay, well, I think this is gonna wrap up our first spritz and chips. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave your topics that you want us to talk about down below next time. We can like, and we can talk about like anything. It can be marriage questions. It could be, um, you know, like social issues in the world. It can be like news, celebrities, sports, um, like yeah, podcasts, shows, books, whatever you guys want to talk about. Leave your topics for the next episode down below. We're gonna be filming every Thursday um, and I will be back in town I'm traveling next week for work, but I will be here Thursday, so we can film it on Thursday, and it'll go up Friday. Um, One thing, yeah, um, might be fun to do is leave a song mm -hmm. of the week. I like music a lot, and I listen yeah, I to a bunch of new music quite often. I'm gonna actually start leaving a song each spritz and chips. Okay. At the end, and maybe you should do the same, so we have like a. Yeah, but you like look at more music than me. You do like Discover Weekly like, all the time. Yeah, and like I, I go on like kind of like binge searches as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I found a song recently. I don't know how popular it is, or how, it might be like mainstream by now. Because um, I don't, I don't feel like I listen to a lot of mainstream. I don't listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if sometimes I hear songs and it might be already mainstream. It might not be. But one that I really like, it's called "Talk to Me" by Soul Lee Had. Um, I really like it. You put it on the um, screen. Okay, we will see you guys next week in our episode two of Spritz and Chips. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let us know what you thought. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What are you guys gonna talk about today? Um, today was very long. I slept a lot. <laughs> and I. <laughs> and, and, oh, okay, bye.